Witchers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine and we're going to get this March vlog started off. It's March 2nd already, so I already missed the first day. Yesterday was a whirlwind. I didn't have any time to stitch, so I had to um, be a day late for the spring into Mill Hill stitch along. So if you're not um, aware of that by now, which you will be because you won't be seeing this until April 1st or April 2nd or 3rd, and you will, it will have been already going on for a month. So I'm sure you will have seen, but just as a refresher, sorry, let me catch my breath. Okay. Actually, I just got back from a bike ride not that long ago. And because it was 70 degrees outside and it's gonna snow on Saturday. So gotta take advantage of these nice early spring days while we're at it. Um, before we get started, I did wanna say Oh my gosh, you guys love a whip parade, I found out. I was blown away, actually, about four days after my whip parade uploaded. I think I already had like 4,000 views on it, and then now, so it's, it's March 2nd right now, so I think it's been up maybe about a week or so, week and a half, and I looked this morning and like 7,000 views. I mean, I've just been receiving the best comments from everybody. I've been getting, uh, I think I got like over 300 new subscribers. I've been getting some personal messages from people just telling me how much they enjoyed the whip parade, which that just makes me really happy. I didn't even think that I was gonna get very many views on it because it's the same old whips I've been stitching for years and years and it's like not anything really new, but I hadn't anticipated the fact that a whole bunch of new subscribers would find my channel and you know, then once, you know, once YouTube sees that, that, um, a video is getting a lot of likes and a lot of comments and a lot of views, then it just kind of keeps recommending it to more people. As a matter of fact, every time I get into YouTube, it recommends my own video to me. Like it doesn't even realize I'm the one that uploaded it. So, but anyway, it's just been nice. People have reached out and said how much they enjoy that I stitch Dimensions kits and Mill Hill kits and just kind of a lot of just... I don't know, stitching that people like to see. So that makes me happy because obviously I like the stuff I stitch too and it's always nice to know other people like it. It makes doing these videos all that much better because probably not a month goes by that I don't think to myself, do I really wanna make floss tube videos anymore? It's a lot of work and I just always stitch the same old things. But apparently there's a lot of you out there that like it, so. As long as you like it, I guess I'll just keep on doing it. Okay, let's get started because I'm losing my light. It's late in the afternoon and I've got two windows open right here and it's barely enough light. So um, let me just take a sip of coffee and, and we'll get started. Okay, so mostly what I'm here to do today is to show you where I'm starting because um, I, I just like to get a good starting point so you can see where I go for, for the month. So I'm still gonna continue working on this. Um, it's what I focused on for February. I started it on Groundhog Day and I went ahead and worked on it all of February and I still feel like it at the beginning of March here, I still feel like working on this. So I'm gonna continue with it. And so this was my progress so far. Everything's spilling over here. So this was my progress so far that I had uh, completed. So I started it in February, so actually a month ago, a month ago today. And I got the whole tree done. And just as a refresher, and I'm not gonna keep mentioning it because that's one thing I noticed in my video last time is I kept repeating myself in between clips. Um, does this look better with or without the light? I need to watch my clips because I kind of kept saying the same thing over and over again when I was editing it. It's like, you already mentioned that five times, Christine. So, sorry, I got a hair hanging in my face. Um, I will just, in case you're, you are new, um, welcome to my channel, first of all, and welcome back to all my old subscribers. Uh, I had switched out the black calls for, it, it's a half, half cross stitches and it calls for four strands. So, because you fold it over every time you pulled it through and pulling eight strands through 18 count and it was just really hard um, and it was bothering my hand so I went ahead and decided to do only three strands with the black and in my last video I was saying oh you can't even really tell but when I was watching the video editing it you could kind of see like that it wasn't real good coverage right here 
and it's kind of showing up like that here in the camera too but I can tell you that it's odd because when I look at it in real life it's actually really good coverage I mean you don't see the camera is, is definitely picking up a lot of those spaces in between the tree but when you look at it you know just in real life you don't see that at all so just in case you're toying with the idea of trying to go you know with less strands and you're looking at mine and thinking it doesn't look like good coverage it, it really is in real life trust me you you don't see those spaces in between the black so I think it was worth it I'm still happy with my choice so um, this is where I'm starting out with March and I'm gonna work on this until I don't feel like working on it anymore and then I'll probably switch to um, a different project probably something from the whip pile that you all know fully now what my whip pile looks like so um, yeah I got a lot of encouragement to finish the eagle this year so do I dare make a floss tube promise to finish the eagle project eagles majesty this year I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it you hear you you heard it here I'm gonna finish that project this year if I have to be stitching it on midnight of New Year's Eve so be it I haven't decided which month I'm going to dedicate to it, but yeah, I think it's it's high time I get a finish on that one. So you'll be seeing that soon. I just don't know when. Okay, so the next thing that I started uh, for the spring into Mill Hill hashtag going on that I just mentioned, um, this was what I chose to work on first is the succulents and I didn't get any stitches in yesterday and I just barely got some in today I got my first start so let me get something behind here so you can see I'm losing my light quick barely got one little succulent in these are the colors look at how pretty they are oh. yep that should take no time at all to finish it's got this cute little charm I don't know if this is like a, it's like the little flower on top of the succulent. Let's see if you can, can you see that at all? Probably not. Because my camera doesn't focus well, especially not with good light. But I'll give you a good close-up view of that when I get it done. Um, and when that's done, I'm going to probably uh, work on the milk can little one. And I'm going to start one of the big ones this month. I just haven't decided if it's going to be the, be the butterfly or the bird. One of those three, for sure. Okay, I think that that's all I have to say right now. So I will give you an update as the month goes on as to what I get done. So just had to get that starting point. All right, happy stitching and I'll see you soon. Good morning, stitchers. It's Saturday, March 12th, and it's early in the morning, early for me. I'm, yeah, bags under my eyes. I look tired because I am tired, but I've got a coffee, and I'm sitting in my car because I had to take my son, Riley, to um, take his SAT test this morning. So we had to, um, so he, I, I homeschool him. He does an online school, so I had to sign up for um, a testing site near us. And the one, the closest I could get was like a, a high school, thirty about thirty minutes away. And um, he had to be here at seven thirty. I think the they start checking in at seven forty-five, and then they lock the doors at eight. And I always get so nervous when I have to be somewhere like that, like that's that important, you know. And I've never driven there before, and so. I didn't sleep good last night because I always don't trust that I set my alarm correctly and I even set two alarms <laughs> because I just I mean he's done a lot of studying for this test and I don't want him to miss it uh, obviously wouldn't be the end of the world if he missed it they have another one I think the next one's in um, March but his school gives him a voucher to take it free for the first time so we if he takes it again we have to pay $55 for it so anyway None of it's super important, but I got him here. He's in. <laughs> He's in the school. He started the test. It's after eight. He hasn't come back out to say he forgot something or anything. So we're good. I am not a big fan of standardized tests. Let's just say that. I've actually opted out of most of them for my kids for most of their life because don't get me started, but I'm not a big fan of standardized tests. 
So, and actually this one, um, which I'm so happy, colleges are not really starting to really require the SAT test anymore, which I think is amazing because it's not a good, mm, it's not a good mechanism for finding if somebody is ready for college or not. Let's, let's just say that. Uh, so the school that Riley wants to go to, it's actually optional to take the SAT test for that. So he didn't really need to take this test, but I don't know. I think he's just kind of wants to do it, you know, just to see what he would score on it. So it's kind of a more for fun, although I don't think he was really, <laughs> I don't think he was really that excited about it. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. You probably don't really care about any of this right now. So anyway, uh, because of the rising gas prices right now, I decided instead of driving 30 minutes here, 30 minutes back and forth when the test was over, I'm just going to camp out here and wait for him. So I brought a bag of stitching. I didn't really know what I wanted to work on, so I brought several things. And there's a Starbucks nearby. In case I need a refill, I'll probably drive over there. And I'm sure I'm going to need to use the restroom. I don't know if the school is going to, I don't know if the high school is going to let me in to use their bathroom. But uh, I can always use the one at Starbucks. Okay, so I did bring this one. This is my uh, progress so far. I don't think I've actually showed you. Did I show you my progress I've made? I was working in the background here. I was going to uh, move the cue snap and continue doing the bottom of the tree down to the corner down here, which I probably will do soon. But then I thought, well, since it's kind of a pain to move cue snaps and I didn't really want to move the cue snap until I stitched everything that's kind of in this area of the cue snap. So I might work on instead of what am I hitting here? Instead of hit uh, moving down to the bottom here, I might continue doing some of the background up here around the horses. Now, this right here is, is where, this mark right here is where the horse begins, the mama horse begins. That's kind of like her side. And so there is some more of the half cross stitches, really easy background up there that I could do. So I'm going to decide, I have to decide, do I want to go down and get to the corner and start moving along the bottom? Or do I want to stay where I'm at and work on a lot of this background up here? Let me show you again so you can have a refresher of what I'm talking about. So yeah, this, so I've done, I'm kind of this part right here. I've done, this is kind of the background. So there's all of this like really soft, easy background stuff to do that I can do right there before I move the cue snap down and do this. So what should I do? What should I do? I don't know. I think I'll probably, I do think I feel like working on, I think I can make more progress if I work up here because it's like one or two strands of half cross stitch. And um, I don't think there's any full cross stitches in that up there. So maybe that's what I'll work on. But I didn't know if I'd feel like working on that. So I did bring, uh, let me dig, hold on. All right, I did bring the Mill Hill kits, the little kit that I was working on, the succulents. I did finish all the stitching on it and I started the beading. So you can see the only beading I've done, if I hold it sideways, you can see there just some purple and a, oh, you can't, it doesn't focus very well, but you can see I just did a little bit of the beading there. It's kind of, might be a little tedious doing some beading in my car, so I might not work on that, but I did bring the next one that I want to work on, which is this cute little milk can, and I could open that up and sort the floss and start stitching that. That's kind of an easy car stitch to do too. So I don't know. I haven't decided what I feel like working on. Um, but uh, maybe I will check in in just a little bit and let you know how I did. And if I don't check in, it's just because the test ended and we got in the car and left and I didn't have time to check in again. So, okay. If not, I will check in at home and show you what I got done. All right. See you soon. All right. I thought I would give a little bit of an update. Some time has passed and I did four lengths of floss in this color right here and I had a little bit of a mishap because when I was adjusting myself and getting ready to stitch I dropped the back of my needle minder which had my needle attached to it and I had to dig around my filthy car floor down there <laughs> and I did finally find it in the pile of dirt and crumbs down there 
Uh, I thought it might have attached. I thought I heard it attach itself to some metal under the seat. So yeah, I was digging around for quite a while. But I did find it. All is good. Found the needle. Found the magnet with the needle still attached. And got started. And got this much done so far. So I'm getting ready to switch colors. And I think, oh, as you can see, I decided to work on the background rather than moving the Q-snap. So I'm going to work in this area, I think, next. And I just have to say, it's a gorgeous day for sitting in my car. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's perfect. I have the windows cracked. And the lighting, if you've never stitched in your car, it's about the best lighting you can get. I just really like it. So, yes, I'm quite enjoying myself. Okay, I'll check in in a little bit. All right, I think the test is about ready to end, so I'm going to go ahead and film this last clip before uh, all the kids come out. And just show you that I stitched this color next, and I had a little bit there, there, worked my way down to here, and I just couldn't help it. I had to stitch the ears of the mama horse. I know I wasn't going to, I said I wasn't going to stitch any of the horse, I was going to reward myself with that till the end, but I might reward myself with bits and pieces of the horse as I go on. So there's the ears. They don't look like ears much now, but they will when I get them back stitched. And that's about all I'm going to get done right now. I just remembered that tonight is the start of daylight saving time, so that means I'm going to lose an hour of sleep tonight. I think that an afternoon nap might be in order. I think that sounds like a good idea. All right, I'll check in when I have more progress to show, and I hope you all have a nice stitching Saturday. How did it go? Did it? <laughs> Good morning, Stitchers. Happy Spring Equinox. It is Sunday, March 20th in the morning, and I'm getting ready to stitch. So, yeah, uh, periodically throughout the week, I did a little bit of stitching, and I mostly stitched on this. So let's show you the progress I have right here. Still continued working in the background. So I think, yep, I think when you saw me last, I had done just a little bit here and had worked my way down to Mama Horse's ears. And then, yeah, I've continued to go around there and do all of this. And I'm going to continue working on that today. I had the intentions of getting up really early and stitching this morning because my boys are on spring break. Their spring break starts this week. And so my oldest is uh, home for a week from school. And they went snowboarding this morning. So my husband got up really early this morning to take them to the bus. And then and I was still sleeping. But then I woke up while he was gone. And I thought, you know, I'm going to get up and make some coffee and start stitching. And then I got up, got my sweatshirt on. And I was going to go downstairs. And I thought, well, I'll wait till he gets home. And then I'll, you know, I'll come down after he gets home. Well, I got back into bed and I fell asleep until 9.30. So then I vegged on my phone for another half an hour. Then I finally crawled out of bed, made myself a cup of coffee, and it's 10.30. And I'll, now I'm finally starting to stitch. So here I am. I thought I would show you my before progress. And I'm going to work in... So there's this one blend I'm working on right here. And there's a whole bunch of it right there. So I'm going to try to get that done and then fill in some of this. And then just kind of maybe work my way over. But if I get, look, I think as I get to start to be about down here, you know, this is all horse area here. So um, I think once I get this done, I'm going to move the cue snap and start working on this bottom down here. That's my plan anyway. And I did want to show you what else I got done this week. I had been working on the succulents. Let me put this here so I can have a better background. But I finished the succulents. Look at how cute that is. I did not put, so the back is not, doesn't have felt on it, but I did do the beaded loop here. And let's see if we could zoom in and look at, isn't that a cute little button hanging on the little terracotta pot there? So, so cute. Trying to turn it so you could see the beads a little bit better. There, you can see it a little bit better right there. But I thought it was super adorable. So I need to take a picture for Instagram because I actually finished this a few days ago. 
and I just keep forgetting to post my picture for spring into Mill Hill. But I got that done. And then I've also been working on my Bucilla felt ornaments. Uh, I've been working on that in the background, but I make separate videos of that. But I will give you a sneak peek just in case you see those videos and don't know what those are. Um, I know I had mentioned them before when I was working on my uh, gingerbread ones, but then I started working on my kit with the, uh, what's it called? Under the Sea, I think it's called Under the Sea Ornaments. This is just a glimpse. This is one of the six that, I'm, that I've am that i done. I've finished the whole kit, so I do need to make another video showing all those too. But so sparkly, I love it. So I need to get those, the other three. I did post my first three on Instagram and I need to get my other three posted, so I gotta do that today. But that's it so far. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do some stitching and uh, I will check in maybe in a few hours and let you see what I got done. All right, yes, we have, what else do I have to do today? So we're picking up the boys at five and I don't know. I, I probably, there's a lot of other things I should be doing today besides stitching, so I'm not gonna stitch the whole day, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a pretty good dent in this though. All right, see you soon. Good morning, Stitchers. Well, it's been another week, so sorry I didn't check in like I said I was going to last Sunday after doing a couple of hours of stitching and spring break just whizzed by. So here we are, Sunday, March, is it the 27th? March 27th. And what you're looking at right here is a Viscornu that I bought. It's a PDF pattern I bought from a Ukrainian seller. The name of this shop there is Fireplace Hobby. I've been searching all kinds of um, Ukrainian designs and oh, there are some beautiful ones out there. So I wanted to get something that I knew would be very doable for me to work on now. And um, I thought that, and I needed another Biscornu anyway. So hold on, this is going to, my light's going to, oh, there's a close-up of it there. Um, anyway, this is just beautiful. And I needed another Biscornu anyway that I've been wanting to make. So I'm going to hopefully start this one soon. And... Um, Yes, while I'm stitching it, I will be sending good thoughts and prayers to all of our friends over in Ukraine. Just devastating situation going over there, and it's really been affecting me. Really, I don't know, really just been in a funk lately, I guess, is really the best way to describe it. Um, now that's going to go out again, so hold on. Um, I'm going to bring you over and show you what my progress so far on my horses has been. So let me just move over. All right, so I have gotten quite a bit done, as you can see, this week. I went ahead and just worked on all of this, and it's been very therapeutic and relaxing. I've been working on it mostly a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the mornings, a little bit in the evenings, uh, while my husband and I watch TV. And I did do a little bit more on the back of the horse's neck over here because I was working on a blend over here that I had just a tiny bit of length left and I didn't want it to go to waste and I noticed that symbol was right up there in the horse. And it was just enough to do that little bit of stitching right up there. So it's going to be the horse's nose or, I don't know, snout. I don't know what you call that part of a horse. <laughs> anyway, because the, the mama horse is looking that way, but... Um, I'm about ready to move the Q-snap, so I wanted to get in here and just show you what this looks like while it's in the Q-snap. It'll be the first time that I've moved the Q-snap. It is very tempting to work on Mama Horse, but I think I'm going to hold off. And I think in the last clip I said I was going to work on the bottom left corner, but I have changed my mind, and I think I'm going to move over and work on the upper right corner. So... This is what it looks like. I probably should take a picture of this for Instagram before I move it, but I don't know. I've just been slacking on Instagram lately, slacking on everything. Um, like I was just saying, you know, just the whole state of the world, everything that's going on over there in Ukraine is just, you know, it's just so heartbreaking to hear the stories and see everything that's going on over there. Um, and I've had two of my son, so my youngest son is 17, Riley, and he has two friends 
One enlisted in the Marines this past week, and our next door neighbor, who's also my son's age, 17, that my boys grew up with, um, I was just informed by his mom that he's going to be enlisting in the Navy this coming week, which is, for both boys, not a complete shock, but it kind of is for the second the second boy. Um, last time I talked to his mom, just a few weeks ago, he had been accepted into you know a local college and was going to be starting college in the fall. And then when I talked to her yesterday, she said he decided to enlist in the Navy. And which isn't really surprising that um, he's kind of, I think, always been sort of drawn to that. Uh, he's been, I think his favorite item of clothing is camo pants, and he's been wearing those pretty much as long as we could remember. Uh, the other friend um, has always planned, I think, on going into the Marines and has even done a Young Marines boot camp in the past, but I think he was changing his mind and waffling back on it, back and forth about it. And then with this whole thing um, going on with Ukraine and Russia, I think it just sort of changed his mind and he feels very compelled to enlist in the Marines. And so he did that this week. So, yeah. It's, I don't know how I feel about that. It's bittersweet. You're proud, you're happy, you're sad, you're scared. I mean, they're not my kids, but they're kind of like my kids, my boys. So I feel for them and their families and yeah. Okay, well, um, we let's, let's move on from talking about that. Um, I have also <laughs> um, bought a couple of kits. So let me show you those. This first one came across on uh, eBay and it's one that I thought was still available and I had wanted to buy it in the past and um, so then when I saw it I thought oh yeah I should get that but oh it's available you know these dimension gifts you think they're available and you you have plenty of time to get them but sometimes they just go away and I could not find this one anywhere anymore so I think it's out of print I don't know but I bought it just in case it is because it's called winter morning so beautiful and I'm extremely happy to have that in my collection. And then another kit I bought is, I, I kind of went on the lookout because I told you in my, I believe sometime in an earlier clip, I was showing you my Ucilla ornaments and I was kind of thinking of having a theme on my mantle this year of sort of a seaside theme. So I went and looked to see if Dimensions had any shell kits that would be sort of easy to stitch. I don't want to spend a long time stitching because I might also do a mill hill, another one of the mill hill buttons and beads, the starfish maybe, or you know, one of the seaside ones that they have. And I found this is a matted accent, which I've never done one of these before. And it's it's not a real big stitch. It's 14 count Ada, but what's interesting is it comes with this mat that has, yeah, just almost kind of looks like a a printed mat. It's a, yeah, it's a printed mat of some sort. Let me get back and see if I can get a farther glance at that there. So, yeah, I mean, you can tell by the threads, it's just not going to be a difficult stitch at all. And I'm excited to do that. So my plan there, because I think I mentioned in a previous video a while back that I was going to be starting Cafe by the Sea for my birthday in April. And I I may have even mentioned it was just going to be maybe a big stitch along. And I think I even had at least one person in the comments say that your birthday was also in April. And so I think um, me and then Cat Talks, we, we our birthdays are about four days apart from each other and we were going to start that. And then somebody else in the comments had said that their birthday was in April and they were going to start it. But I, I've sort of reneged on that because I have decided I don't want to start another big, massive Dimensions kit at the moment. I'm just not, I'm just not right in the headspace to start another big one yet because especially after doing my whip parade, I really want to focus on getting some of those other ones done. So I've decided that this is going to be my birthday start and... Um, I've put Cafe by the Sea on the back burner. So I do apologize if anybody out there, if I had mentioned that that was going to be a stitch along, that I'm sorry, I sort of re reneged on that plan. But that doesn't mean you can't start it on your birthday. I just won't be stitching it along with you. So that's the only plan I have going forward for April. Um, 
I did want to talk about one other thing because I had, somebody had left a comment after they had watched my last video about all the trouble I was having trying to stitch with four strands through the 18 count and how it was really bothering my, my fingers and it was just really hard to get it through. And somebody had recommended to me, let me grab it, these needle pullers. They're like little rubber gripper needle grippers. And they had suggested to me using those. And I said, well, I don't really know. I sort of questioned them in the comments and said, well, I don't really know how that could help, you know, just having, because it's not like I was having trouble gripping the needle. It was more just using the strength to pull it through. And they said that they really recommended I give this a try and said that it's, they swear by it, says that it definitely helps just I think because you don't have to grip the needle so hard to pull it through that you just, it's more relaxing on the hand. So I bought some of these, but in the meantime, while I was waiting for those to arrive, I remembered that I had these in my stash, these little rubber gripper thumb things that you put on. And I thought, I'm going to go ahead while I was waiting for that, give these a try. So I put one on my thumb and one on my finger and they're, they're very grippy. And even though I have decided for this project that I'm not going to go back to using four strands, I'm only going to use three at the most, and none of this here was difficult to stitch, but I was practicing using, oops, I think I got that one on backwards. There we go. I was practicing using these little thumb grippers, and they, they do work amazing. I can see that you don't have to squeeze the needle so tight when you're pulling it through. But what I didn't like about these is I can't really feel the needle in my hand, so it was very kind of strange, you know, it was just, you, I mean, you, you can tell the needle was there because of the little holes and you can feel it, but it just, it was, it was odd to not really have the feeling of the needle in my fingers. So it took a little bit of getting used to, but I just wanted to tell you, and I have not tried this yet, but I wanted to show you and I wanted to pass that tip along in case you are someone who likes to do dimensions kits, but you don't like the fact that it's hard to get the threads through you know, the, the tight count on the Ada. So passing that tip along, and I'm hoping somebody else will find that helpful. Okay, let me think about if there's anything else I need to mention. Uh, let me put you on pause while I take a sip of coffee and think. All right, I can't think of anything else uh, to talk about. And since it is so close to the end of the month, let me put this here so you can stare at this one instead for a little bit. Uh, yes, there's only four days left in the month, and since it's uh, the beginning of a week, I'm. this may be the last check-in that I do this month. I may go ahead and upload this vlog and stop here, but I did want to say that I may take the month of April off from vlogging. I may vlog, but I may not upload at the end of April, I may wait until the end of May. I haven't decided yet, but um, I've just been having problems with my neck again. And just I just need to get my health back on track. And I, I want to turn over a new leaf. I know I keep saying that. But I really want to start exercising, eating right, drinking more water, less coffee. Get my neck to calm down a little bit and I think I'm going to maybe kind of cut down on the amount of stitching I've been doing and yeah I might just take April off to sort of reset and reset my mind and kind of get back on track so I don't know I, I hate to sound so down right now I'm just it's the mood I'm in today it's the mood so All right, I had to pause there because my son woke up. I had to say good morning to him. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. I think I was saying that I was going to take maybe the month of April off from vlogging. I may check in just a few times, but uh, you won't probably see me till the end of May. And I can't promise that. I mean, you know, you may see me at the end of April too. But um, all right, I'm going to move the cue snap. Maybe take a picture of my, my project for Instagram and move the Q-snap and start doing a little bit of stitching. And I do need to record a video with my Bucilla felt ornaments too. So you may see a video from that coming up soon because 
I have, I'm excited to show what I've done and I'm getting ready to start, I think, some butterflies. All right, well, that's it. Thank you so much. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you all have a happy stitching day. And I will see you soon. All right, it's just been a few minutes and I just wanted to show you that I messed with my Q-snaps for a bit. It always takes me a bit to get them straight, but I have moved the Q-snaps. And so I am ready to move on toward the right of this beautiful design. And I think I failed to mention that I am going to continue working on this into April because I'm still not ready to put it down. So I just have this to stitch over here. I'm going to work my way over and start working my way down. So yes, I'm going to continue on this in April. I'm just going to keep continuing on it until I don't feel like working on it anymore. And I also thought of one more thing I wanted to say before I let you go and before I get started stitching. Hold on. I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Mary over at Daydream Stitcher. If you're not subscribed to her, now would probably be a good time. So she's celebrating seven years on FlossTube, but she just, right before that, did FlossTube um, channels to watch in 2022, and she names 22 FlossTubers, and I was honored to be among her list. So thank you so much, Mary, for the shout out. And I actually found a few FlossTubers I had never heard of. So if you are new to FlossTube or you've been watching for a while and you want to um, check out Mary and check out her uh, video there and maybe even find some more floss tubers through her and I think she said she's going to continue doing some more videos like that uh, moving forward so she's a good reference to have um, you know as a link to other floss tubers too not to mention she's a wonderful floss tuber herself so go give her channel a check out if you'd like and um, say hi okay here I go getting ready to do some stitching Going in for the dive. Oh, by the way, too, I was in my last clip when I was had my little needle grippers on and I was looking for my needle to show you and I realized I my needle wasn't there. So I had to uh, do a bit of searching and I found the um, needle in the crevice of my couch. So I don't think I've ever not been able to find a needle that I've lost. So let's just hope that luck continues if I ever lose any more. But I had it tucked under here and I think it just snagged on something. But uh, yeah, crisis averted needle has been found. And um, so, thankfully, since I like to go barefoot most of the time. So, all right. See you soon. Hey, Stitchers. I decided to give one more clip to end this vlog because I was out stitching this morning. And I'm doing a signs of life check out in my backyard. And I love this time of year because everything that's dead is starting to show signs of life. I have a little Nanking cherry bush here and if you can see it's kind of starting to get its little pink flowers right there getting ready to bloom and I was just looking at all of my stuff along my backyard yeah it needs to be kind of cleaned out a little bit but I have a plethora of things that have just kind of naturally grown wild back here I don't know what most of it is but I love when things start to come to life in the spring and it just makes me happy so I planted a lilac bush back here. Yeah, I know I need to clean up some stuff that the, the winter and its wind has brought, but let's look at this. Can you see that? My lilacs are starting to bloom and I'm so excited. So yeah, all right, let's go back over to my chair and we'll do a stitching update. All right, so in my last clip, I showed you this Biscorn U that I bought. I didn't even realize it was called a hug Biscorn U. And I think that's perfect because it's like I'm giving Ukraine a hug. And I started it. And this is what I did so far on it. Right here, just a little bit up in the top left corner. And it was stitching up really easily, really nicely. And I'm gonna continue working on that. But, oh, I didn't say, it is April 1st. It's the morning of April 1st right now. But I am going to add this on to March's vlog because this was stitching that I did up through March 31st. So just for posterity's sake, I need to include it into the March vlog. And then this is what I did after moving the Q-snap on Marin Full. 
So you can see I moved the Q-snap over. I have reached the upper right edge, um, but there has been a problem because this section all right here is wrong. It's all moved over one stitch because when I was going across here and I had to just be careful that I counted when I did this row across and came across over here, what I had done accidentally is put two spaces here instead of one and I didn't double check and so then when I stitched this then I from there I went over to here and I stitched all of this then when I went back to go stitch this I realized my mistake and I realized that all of this was moved over one stitch so um, I'm going to fix that without redoing this so what I'm going to do is I did go back and um, I unstitched a lot of this but I think there's still one little bit of a mistake right there that's not going to matter because it's just foliage. But yes, I've decided that, hold on, let me get, rest my hand here. I've decided that I would make this part right. So this is all correct right now. So this, this is part of the barn and this, I, I have actually double checked several points across here and it, it's all um, matching up. So that's good. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and I'm just going to add an extra stitch of maybe black in here just to give an extra stitch right here so that everything from here kind of matches up with it. And since that's foliage, it won't matter. And then the only thing I need to remember to do after that is throughout the rest of the project, I need to make sure that when I get to the end that I just do one extra stitch of whatever color I'm working with. Otherwise, I'm going to end up you know there's going to be a little step right there so I just decided to do that instead of unstitching all of that so remember people count three times stitch once don't count once and stitch once count three times and stitch once I tell that to myself all the time and yet I still fall into the mistake of doing it ah, oh well not too bad okay so that is all I have for my March vlog. I'm going to end it, get this, try to get this uploaded by tonight. And um, I did want to also give an update that I'm feeling much better <laughs> than I did in my last clip. I, in the last three or four days, I have definitely got my eating back on track. I cut my carbs down by about half. I've cut out my nighttime cup of coffee. And although it causes me to wake up with a headache in the next morning, it's already starting to go away. So, um, and I've exercised. I rode the elliptical rider for three, maybe four, four days in a row now. And can you hear all the birds chirping? I mean, it's spring, birds chirping, all of the nature is coming alive and stirring and nothing makes me happier than that. So um, my mood has definitely improved. And when my mood improves, my creativity improves, my whole outlook on life improves. And so, um, yeah, I probably will do a vlog in April. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I really do like doing vlogs. I just, once in a while, just get caught up and, you know, when it, when I get anxiety, then I don't feel like doing anything and, but I feel better now. So I just wanted to let you know that you probably will see me at the end of April. I can't promise I'll have a lot to show, but I'll pop in and at least show you what I've been up to because I'm sure it will be something creative. And thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. As my husband and I were returning home from an errand, and we were still safely tucked in the truck, we uh, saw our little skunk has returned from last summer, apparently, or has still been around. Uh, we were a little concerned because they're nocturnal and she was poking around during the daylight. But uh, I did a little bit of research and realized that this time of year, um, either pregnant mamas or mamas with babies will be seen foraging for food in the middle of the day. So uh, let's just hope that those babies aren't under my shed. And this also means that uh, we'll probably see more skunks by the end of summer. So I need to be careful when setting my trash out at night because they are cute, but they're stinky and I do not want to be sprayed by one. <laughs>